if you graph both those things, and that's what I've asked you to do here is graph both those things, we can graph it on some software here and see what what it looks like. Or in your calculator you could, or by hand. You know, it's just two linear functions. It's not that hard. But I'll do it this way so we can move it around here. Okay, just pick any point there. So, I mean, at random, we'll pick that point. If that's a point on the original function, when you switch its coordinates here, this is... Uh, oh, come on. Okay, there's the coordinates of that point. And then the inverse of that, um, the inverse function is going to have that point. That's a point on the inverse function. Okay, reversing those coordinates, wherever you happen to make that one go. If negative 1, 2 is on that function, 2, negative 1 is on its inverse function. What is that going to mean in terms of this graph here? How are they related to each other? It's hard to see when it's just straight lines here, but actually, and I'm hoping you learned this last year, it's a reflection across that line, okay? Whatever point up here is on the original function, if you reflect that point in the line y equals x, that's where its inverse is. The inverse of a function is the reflection in the line y equals x. All right, y equals x, these points here, any point on that line doesn't change because they have the same coordinates, right? If you if you take this point down here, oops, <coughs> negative 4, negative 4, that point's on both the, the original function and the inverse because the coordinates are the same. When you switch negative 4, negative 4, it doesn't move. Any of the other ones, if you switch the coordinates, it's going to end up down here. Okay, pick any point here. Negative 2... 0 becomes 0, negative 2. 0, negative 4 becomes 4, 0. All of those are reflections across there. You can kind of think about those lines. If you drew a line right across here, okay, that gets reflected across there. That point gets reflected across there. It's kind of a, you know, think of, oops, I missed. Think of this as a mirror. Okay, and you're reflecting all those points across. Points on the line don't matter. All right, so that should be something that hopefully you learned in Route 11. I'll leave you to draw the graph of that later if you haven't already drawn it. Now, the reason that we're, this is coming up now is because we need to talk about what the inverse of an exponential function is. As you go through this, I'm, I'm not going to go through and do all of this for you, but you need to apply the concept of inverse that in theory we have from before and apply it to this new kind of function that you're looking at. So the new kind of function is this exponential function. You have to apply the concept of the inverse. So here's the, here's the facts that you know, okay? In theory, this is what you know. You know that, you know that, uh, the, a function and its inverse Okay, you know the relationship between a function and its inverse. Except I'm having great difficulty writing here, inverse. Okay, you know the relationship between that. Um, you know that you know that exponential functions. I should have put this. Okay, you know the relationship between a function and its inverse. You know that exponential function and a logarithmic function are inverses. Okay, so if you know how a function and its inverse are related, and you know that an exponential function and a log function are inverses, you should be able to put that together and apply that, you know, apply this concept to knowing what the graph of an exp of a logarithmic function is. You should be able to graph log base two of x, knowing what y equals two to the x is. These are inverses. If you know what y equals two to the x looks like you should be able to try and graph its, its inverse here. So you're graphing y equals 2 to the x and its inverse. Its inverse is going to be y equals log base 2 of x. We already know those are inverses. If you're trying to 
draw the graph of an exponential function. Remember, just think in terms of, I'd like you to be able to do it without having to actually write down kind of points, but just think of a few points, 2 to the x, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, and, and so on like that to get the exponential function. And then if you want to have a look at what the what log base 2 looks like, it's just going to be reversing those coordinates. Okay? Can you work on that right now? Then you're going to be asked to look at various bases. So you need to do the same thing here. If you want to graph y equals log base 2 of x, think about what 2 to the x looks like and just kind of reverse the coordinates in your head. This is base 10, of course. <coughs> You're asked some questions about this. Where would this be? Think about how the, you know, this is the key here is think about how for that, for that particular activity, think about how um, the base affects the shape of a logarithm graph. Think about where the asymptotes are. Okay. Before you, I guess before you, uh, before you start talking about transformations here, Think about where's the asymptote. I didn't put this question in here, but think about where the asymptote is of this graph. Okay, where is the asymptote? Think about what the domain and the range are and all that. We'll kind of have a summary after, but I want you to think about those things. Think about what the range is, what the domain is. You want to look at just the basic aspects of the graph, and you want to make some connections to how does that compare to exponential graphs. All right, I'm going to let you work on that. I'll kind of circulate, circulate around and help you. The only other part of this I'm likely going to do with you is kind of summarize it at the end once you've finished looking at it. You're, you're going to have to remember some of the transformations you learned last year and that we've been working on with these graphs. If you change y to y minus 4 or you change x to x plus 3, how does that shift the graph? Okay, there's kind of a hint here for you. A lot of this is going to be you learning it by doing, not by listening to me. Okay, so don't wait for me to kind of fill out the rest. Work on it. Work on it in pairs. Work on it on your own. Whatever you like. <coughs> Ask questions. Use your calculator to graph things. Use, you know, go to one of the computers and use this software if you want. It's, it, there's, you know, if you go to my website, you can run it even just from there. And uh, and draw some graphs if you want. Now the only thing is here, maybe the the last thing I should point out before you get started is if you want to check some of your graphs, remember that you can't. There's no on your graphing calculator. There's no log base two button, but you did learn the change of base rule, and you can you can use the change of base rule to graph a logarithmic function if you want to. Let's clear out all this stuff here. Okay, that, I mean, that's just writing like a normal function. Any exponential function, you can graph like that. If you want to graph log base 2, there's no, there's no log base 2 button on here or function. But what you can do is if you want log base 2 of x, how can you use the change of base rule to graph that? Let me write it here. It might help, help you remember. If you want to graph uh, y equals log base 2 of x using technology, you need to use it. You need to use the change of base rule. Log base two of x. Remember the change of base rule. Log base a of b. What's that equal to? <coughs> something divided by something. We don't remember. Yeah, log b divided by log a. So divided by the log of that base. You can use any other base. Base ten. You know, so you can use your calculator. Natural logarithms if you want. Okay, it's back here, change of base rule if you need to look back on it. But that's how you can graph it. So I could make this log base 2 of x, I could make log x over log 2. That would give me the, this is kind of way around it to graph, um, to graph log base 2. You can graph log of x divided by log of 2. Okay, that's, that's the inverse of that. This is log base 2. Think again, just reversing the points. If you want to see how it's a reflection, y equals x, put that line in the middle and it is a reflection, right? 
this function is a reflection of this function. It's a mirror image across there. Pick any point, 1, 2. Its mirror image is 2, 1 right there. Pick a point up here somewhere. That one is a reflection of that one. That one's that one. Okay. Can you get started on that?